What's up, everybody? Mike Samich coming at you for RacingDudes.com. Here today to talk about the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. This is an absolute banger, generally, and I think this is where you could see an upset come in the two juvenile races. If you want to check out my opinion on the juvenile Colts, you can check that out. I've got a top five video that is out as well. On the juvenile Philly side here, it's much more wide open. You don't have a cave rock. And one of the reasons is because I don't think you have very many good horses in the West Coast, and that means that you can fade most of those horses. That's what I will be doing. So point number one here. Fade the West Coast. They just have not been as good on the Philly side of things. So I'm going to leave out horses like and Tell Me No Lies, like Bob Baffert's Home Cooking, which both will most likely show up and both take some money. So let's fade the West Coast horses and let's focus on the East Coast horses. And that starts with, in my mind, Chocolate Gelato, who debuted for Todd Pletcher on opening weekend at Saratoga, was a heavy favorite, ends up not running that great, but has won two back-to-back -back races since. Currently sits on the board as a 9-2 to favorite overseas. I think Chocolate Gelato is the real deal and is awfully dangerous in this spot. She, to me, is the one horse you can really make the argument is a standout. Another horse that's had a ton of success in these stakes races is Wonder Wheel, who won at Saratoga closing weekend in the grade one race out there for the two-year-old Phillies, comes back and wins this weekend, this past weekend, at Keeneland. Now, I think that there's a little false positives here coming from Wonder Wheel. I'm not willing to take a short price on this horse again, specifically if you watch that Keeneland race. Being in the first post was very important for Wonder Wheel. She was able to get out to the lead, and I thought Tyler Gaffleon did a wonderful job saving the rail and then creating space around that first turn, which allowed her to get far enough ahead to go gate to wire. Two horses out of that race I do like. For Chad Brown, the four horse from that race, Raging C, who I thought was running an excellent race, showed tactical speed, and was trying to sit right behind Wonder Wheel and pounce down the lane, unfortunately took a bad step. And I think that cost Raging C quite a bit. It's the first time going two turns. That was only the second race of her career. There is a lot of upside for Raging C. So I'm interested in Raging C quite a bit. Another horse I think we have to talk about is Chop Chop out of the Brad Cox bar. Now, Brad Cox generally fares very well in these two-year-old races at Breeders' Cup. So you have to respect what he puts out there. Chop Chop ran twice on the turf, flipped over the dirt, and made a huge run in that same race coming from way out of it. And was, I believe, second to last in the backstretch. Made a big-time run. Looked like she had a shot at getting up and catching Wonder Wheel late. Got a little bothered by what happened with Raging Sea when Raging Sea came out a little bit. You got to, again, expect that this horse is going to be able to take another step forward. My biggest knock on Chop Chop, you're going to have Rosario up. You're going to come from way back. To me, those are two red flags when you're looking at a Keeneland racetrack that significantly played towards speed the last two times that we've seen a Breeders' Cup over Keeneland. So a little concerned about what's going to happen there, but I do think that that race could produce two horses that could come from off the pace or sit just off it and be able to win. So... For me right now, going into three, three weeks out, not positive who's where, where the draw is. I'm looking at Chocolate Gelato as my top pick. I like I like Wonder Wheel a little bit, but I, I like the prices that I think I'm going to get on a couple horses like Raging Sea and like Chop Chop. We'll be doing something for the second time at Keeneland that first Friday in November. A couple prices that I'm not sure if they're going to show up, but I think are a little bit interesting. Fun and Feisty, who was actually the favorite in that race of 5-2 to two for Kenny McPeak. Now we get a Kenny McPeak at 25 to 1. That is when you want to be playing this horse. This seems like a Kenny McPeak type race. We have a big price coming from off the pace at Keeneland in a race that no one expects the horse to rebound. Yeah, that's when Kenny McPeak wins and knocks you out of pick five. So a little bit interested in fun and feisty, especially if you get the 25 to 1 price. Thank you very much for checking out this way too early preview of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. We've still got three weeks. We don't know the entries yet, but we'll keep you posted and keep you up to date here at RacingDudes.com. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel over the next three weeks. We're going to have a ton of videos coming out with a ton of content about how you can crush these races. Thank you very much for joining me for this preview. We'll see you guys at the track. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best betting tips and coverage for the 2022 Breeders' Cup. Our wagering guides have cashed for thousands. You cannot miss our 2022 Inside Track Wagering Guide to the Breeders' Cup. So hurry up and subscribe, then go to RacingDudes.com, check out the free picks for every race, every track across the country, and the Inside Track to the Breeders' Cup Wagering Guide, available soon.